the seal of prophethood the seal of messengership the last and the final prophet of god the prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him prophet muhammad peace be upon him never lied never broke a trust never bore false witness he was famous with all the tribes in mecca and was known as spirit of truth as a sadiq prophet muhammad peace be upon him never once engaged in sex outside of marriage nor did he ever approve of it even though it was very common at that time prophet muhammad's only relationships with women were in legitimate contractual marriages with proper witnesses according to law prophet muhammad peace be upon him's first and only wife was lady khadija may god be pleased with her for the 25 years up to her death she and prophet muhammad had been partners for 25 years and during this time prophet muhammad peace be upon him never got married to any other woman prophet muhammad was almost 50 at the time of lady khadija's death lady khadija may god be pleased with her is recognized as a great woman lady khadija may god be pleased with her was the first believer in islam after her it was ali ibn abi talib may god be pleased with him who was the first male to accept prophet muhammad peace be upon him's prophethood lady khadija may god be pleased with her was widely known in arabia as a powerful smart independent woman and many men wanted to marry her but she got married to prophet muhammad peace be upon him because of his honesty and good character lady khadija was a true source of consolation to prophet muhammad peace be upon him in suffering and bad times and she supported him in the cause and mission of islam that there is no god but one god the year lady khadija may god be pleased with her died the same year prophet muhammad's uncle abu talib who supported him throughout his journey also died and this year is called a year of sorrow prophet muhammad peace be upon him continued preaching his message with greater vigor and enthusiasm few months after the death of lady khadija may god be pleased with her lady aisha's father may god be pleased with her offered her hand to prophet muhammad peace be upon him in marriage prophet muhammad peace be upon him did not marry her until she reached puberty and could decide for herself in those times it was not a common practice to seek females permission but islam gave that right to women lady aisha may god be pleased with her is considered as one of the highest scholars of islam lady sauda was the second wife of prophet muhammad peace be upon him after the death of lady khadija may god be pleased with her lady sauda was a widow people never used to get married to widows at that time when she got married to prophet muhammad peace be upon him her age was around 50 prophet muhammad peace be upon him sent a proper marriage proposal many months after the death of lady khadija to lady sauda both her father and herself agreed and marriage took place wives of prophet muhammad peace be upon him are called ummul mu'minin which means they are mothers of the believers prophet muhammad peace be upon him treated his wives 
in the most loving and respectful manner. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, forbade any killing until the orders for retaliation against oppression came from God. Even then, the limits were clearly spelled out and only those engaged in active combat against the believers were to be fought in combat. And even then, only according to very strict rules from God. Killing any innocent life was forbidden by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. There was no genocide of Jews. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him offered mutual protection and forgiveness to the Jews even after they broke their covenants with him many times. They were not attacked until it was clearly proven they were traitors during time of war and tried to bring down the Prophet peace be upon him and the believers at any cost. Retaliation was only to those Jews who had turned traitor and not others. Slaves were common in those days for all nations and tribes. It was Islam that encouraged freeing of the slaves and the great reward from God for those who did so. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him gave the example of this by freeing slaves and encouraging all of his followers to do the same. Examples include Zaid ibn Haritha and Bilal. May God be pleased with them. While there were many attempts of assassination made on Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, his cousin Ali, may God be pleased with him, took his place in bed while he, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Abu Bakr, may God be pleased with him, escaped to Medina from Mecca. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not allow his companions to slaughter any of those who had been involved in these attempts against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Proof for this is when they entered Mecca after the victory and triumphantly and his first words to command his followers not to harm such and such tribes and so and so families. This was one of the most famous of his acts of forgiveness and humbleness. Military combat was forbidden for the first 13 years of prophethood. The desert Arabs did not need anyone to tell them how to fight or to combat. They were experts in this area and held feuds amongst the tribes that lasted for decades. It was not until the proper method of warfare was instituted by God in the Holy Quran with proper rights and limitations according to Prophet Muhammad's commandments that any retaliation against oppression or combat was sanctioned. Orders from God made it clear who was to be attacked, how and when, and to what extent fighting could took place. Destruction of infrastructures was absolutely forbidden by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, except when it is ordained by God in certain instances and then only according to his commands. Cursing and invoking evil actually came to the Prophet, may peace be upon him, from his enemies, while Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him would be praying for their guidance. Classic example is that of his journey to a taif, a place, where the leaders would not even hear him out nor offer so much as the normal courtesy called for. And instead, they set the children of street against him, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, throwing rocks and stones at him until his body was bleeding so much. Blood filled his sandals. The Messenger of God, 
The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was offered revenge by the angel Gabriel, may peace be upon him. If he would give the command, Almighty God would cause the surrounding mountains to fall down upon them, destroying them all. Instead of cursing them or asking for their destruction, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prayed for them to be guided to worship their Lord alone without any partners. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, claimed every person who is born is born in a state of Islam, which means the submission to God on his terms in peace. As a Muslim, the word Muslim means the one who submits to God's will and obeys his commandments. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, further stated, God has created each person in the image that is his according to his plan and their spirit is his. Then as they grow older, they begin to distort their faith according to the influence of the prevailing society and their own prejudices. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught his followers to believe in the God of Adam Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David, Solomon, and Jesus, peace be upon them all, and to believe in them as true prophets, messengers, and servants of Almighty God. He insisted on ranking all the prophets up at the highest level without any distinction between them and ordered his followers to say the words, peace be upon him, after mentioning the name of all these prophets. Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, also taught his followers not only to believe in Islam, but also to believe in the divine origins of both Judaism and Christianity. The Torah, Old Testament, Zabur, Psalms, and Injil, Gospel or New Testament, and they were all originally from the very same source as the Holy Quran from God to His prophets and messengers, may peace be upon them all, while the angel Gabriel, may peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked the Jews to judge according to their own book and they tried to cover up some of it to hide the correct judgment. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prophesied, predicted and foretold of events to come and they happened as he had said. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even predicted something from the past that would come true in the future and it has. The Quran states Pharaoh was drowned in the Red Sea while chasing after Moses, peace be upon him. And God said he would preserve Pharaoh as a sign for the future. Dr. Morris in his book, The Bible, Quran and Science, makes it clear this has happened and the very person of Pharaoh has been discovered in Egypt and is now on display for all to see. This event took place thousands of years before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it came true in the last few decades, many centuries after his death.